Hello everyone, it is AD with Cosmo Astrology and I'm going to be doing your pick a card reading. So this is about your future marriage. So I did a future spouse. If you want to check that out first, I will link that in the description box. Um, but this will be actually looking at your physical marriage. So we're going to be looking at the synastry of this, um, of this connection. And that's just looking at the planets that are involved, um, just to see what energies the overall relationship is working with, what kind of energies you trigger in one another. Um, we'll be looking at the good, <laughs> the good part of the relationship, um, the more po positive qualities. And then we'll be looking at the challenges of the connection. And I say this guys, if you're looking for a you know, honky dory, you know, everything is all peaches and roses and cream, then mm, I'm not that foo foo lame girl. Like, I'm just not. I'm gonna give it to you nitty gritty. I'm gonna give it to you straight. So just take that into consideration, consideration before you enter the dragon's lair. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't prepared to hear it, then don't hear it. But I want to give you the most effective and clear reading as possible just so you know what you're up against so you can actually work on that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that even leads into those past life readings if you want to check those out because, you know, this is real. This is so contracts. This is not fun. You know, we love Disney. Thank you. You know, love Little Mermaid. But shiz be happening after she had to get up off that boat when she hit land like you know they really had to talk some shiz out you know different cultures you had to adapt so I, all that's all i'm saying just take that into consideration okay um and then after that we're going to be looking at the sex baby we're going to get into it we're going to be looking at the nitty-gritty um and yeah, so this should be a fun reading. Um, like I said, I gave my disclaimer <laughs> that I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. But if you know me, that you know this is just for people who are just stumbling upon this channel. And the final question that I will answer is, yes, these are Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> I was coming out the grocery store and I saw them and I was like, ooh, cards. And I was like, that would be fun markers. I don't think they add or subtract anything to the reading at this point, but I only have a few cards, but you know, maybe I'll get me a little collection going. You never know. So anyways, um, let's go ahead and hop into your readings, guys. Um, let's get into it. So let's see. So put that there. That's pile two, pile three. So we are here with pile number one. Hello, pile one. It is AD with Cosmo Astrology, and I'm here to do your pick a card reading. So we are going to be looking at your future marriage, guys. It is really raining when I'm recording this video, so my energy is a little low. So don't, you know, and my voice gets really groggly when the rain is out. So I'm fine, <laughs> but I might be a little, you know, down. Um, but yeah, so... We're going to be looking at the actual like marriage with this partner. I already did a pick a card reading for your future spouse so you can look into the personality, but this will be talking about the marriage itself. So we're going to start off looking at the synastry. That is just to see what planets you might trigger in one another. Um, so to seek to get an overall feeling or yeah, to get an overall feel of what you guys trigger in one another for the connection. Um, we're going to be looking at the good sides of this the good sides of this connection and then we'll be looking at the challenging sides of this connection and that's and I, I did my disclaimer up top but just another one you know I am going to be real so just be prepared for that um and then we're going to look into the sex of course okay <laughs> we're going to look into the good stuff and then we'll end in advice and oracle cards so that's what I got for you so without any further ado let's hop into it hopefully my energy will pick a little bit um uh, well hopefully my energy will pick up so tiger's eye you could have easily picked pile one um in the last reading so yeah so here we go with visor des <laughs> and the element is fiend <laughs> so again this doesn't add or anything it's just a little marker i think it's pretty i think those are pretty funny so okay let's get into it and if you are a Yu Gi Oh person and you know about the cards then please like let me know you know i'll, I'll know i'll learn as i go i'm sure uh, but yeah let's look into it so what are the so what is the synastry of overall for pound one? Oh my gosh. Um, great. So we had the part of fortune increased. Wait, where's my brain? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let me rebalance myself. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so we got the part of fortune increase. Ooh, Jupiter return benefits. Okay, period. Sun. So, and Saturn. So that's funny. All right, let me see if I can move this up. And then I'm going to look at the other cards. So this is my first time kind of setting up the reading like this, but 
well, we're gonna see how it goes. Um, so we got Yod, Destiny. So you guys are definitely meant to to come together. This person will change your life. They are abundant, okay? So this is one side. All right, I had to find my other set of cards. Okay, now let's look at the planets for the other, for the feminine side of this energy. So you got Jupiter, wow. Wow, 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 wow. So this connection is very fortunate, first and foremost. Like, it's a very lucky. People are gonna feel very lucky um, about you. So we got Sun, Neptune, ooh. Uh, Ooh, okay. I've never done a reading like this before, and um, I, I really like this. And then Mars, Saturn. Oh, gosh, I love this. And we've got Mercury at the bottom of the deck. So, again, a lot of communication happening in this connection, a lot of back and forth. Um, the positive and negative sides of Mercury. So, it represents Virgo and Gemini. And Gemini is the more childlike um, talking, where it's just like, okay, a lot of the gab, you know, small talk, curiosity. Where Vir Virgo is more of the disputes kind. It's the more analytical side of talking. So, you really don't small talk with a Virgo. You know, they're always looking for information. So, it can turn into little disputes. It, it rules disputes and all that good stuff. So, I think that there will be a good um, combination of both. But in a mostly lighthearted way... Um, but of course, with this Mars Saturn, we're going to get into that. But I feel like for the most part, you guys are able to communicate through everything. You know, it's it's a steady conversation. If you pick pile one for your future spouse, um, then you understand their personality makes complete sense that both of you share that energy with one another. Um, and so now I'm going to be looking at like the overlapping energies to kind of see how these planets interact with one another. <laughs> so we got the six of cups so i'm gonna take this as a trine so you might have like a jupiter trining one another so this connection is just overall extremely abundant it brings in a lot of fortune you guys travel there's distance you might be from a different culture i'm hearing too or you just have to learn a lot about one another um you grew up differently um it's kind of what i'm hearing but again that that's the curiosity you guys talk it out like you know you're so curious and fascinated with one another um all right, so now we have Sun, the Ten of Cups, Neptune. So I really feel like both of you really see one another as an ideal. You as an ideal, you guys both seek perfection in one another. That's a good thing, and it can be a bad thing because sometimes, especially with Neptune, it can be foggy. You want to see this connection and see both people through the freaking um, what is it like through rose tinted glasses? You know, is really what I'm hearing. Um, and I and I get like the outward world, the outer appearance of this connection is going to think that everything is cool. Like if you guys were to split at some point, not saying that you will, but if you were, everybody would be shocked. They would be like, how did that happen? I thought that they were fine. I thought that it was great. Kind of like Quavo and Saweetie, in my opinion, like everybody was really rooting for them. And then all of a sudden you realize like, dang, like they were having some issues. I didn't realize this. Um, and then we got this Saturn, tried Mars, Saturn night of wands mars so another energy that i'm getting is the pace of the connection i feel like when one person is wanting to do something else when one person is in a more stable mood the other person wants to move and then vice versa like i feel like they are there are um some not necessarily issues but <laughs> i guess there are i guess it would be as far as where your um energy levels are at the same time you might feel like sometimes this person holds you back and vice versa. Like, I feel like you feel like your commitments and responsibilities that come from connections hold you back. But with Mars to the sun card, Mars trying sun, there is like a lot of passion and fiery energy. You guys fire one another up. Like, I feel like nobody really gets under your skin in the way that this person does um, and vice versa. And I think that's why you guys are so connected to one another. But look at all this fire energy that's coming through. So this is an extremely passionate connection like i said if you pick pile one this is your twin flame and you can see it <laughs> as far as the planets that you activate in one another um this literally is your twin flame knight of wands um and you do learn a lot and mature a lot through this connection both of you mature a lot through this connection it just seems that like your ideals with the saturn tribe neptune you kind of get this energy of so, this grounding where you learn life with this person you really learn what life is maybe both of you had like a pretty okay childhood or you know like there you co not coasted but like 
it there were no extreme goods or extreme bads. You know, I feel like it was just middle class and everything else. Maybe not for everybody, but for most people, you were just able to have your head in the clouds. Your feet didn't have to touch the ground. With this person, you will be triggered to grow and transform. And you will really um, go through some trials with this person with Saturn there. You will learn some deep lessons that will kind of shatter the illusions that you've had um, about life in general. Whew, I know that was heavy, but let me tell you, look, there's Jupiter here. There's God. <laughs> there's spirit. There's blessings. So you will be extremely abundant um in this connection both of you again will feel super connected to one another and i can't help again but just say you got this yod energy here it's destiny you're destined to meet you're destined to grow um and move with this person and it will bring abundance and increase into both of your lives look we got the six of cups representing a soulmate energy neptune represents a soulmate energy this person is extremely spiritual i do think that this person charged you up and they inspire you. You guys inspire and want each other to work. Um, and you guys do work hard. Like, I feel like maybe somebody might be in school during this connection. Like, somebody might be in the process. And it's so funny because I thought of this. This might be a terrible example, but just take it with a grain of salt. When I was doing Power One's reading yesterday for the Who Your Person Was, I kept getting the image of, um, what is that Taraji P. Henson movie with and Tyler Perry? Um... Oh my gosh, it's just one word. Oh man, it's not alimony, but shoot, it's something like that. Well, anyways, she was going with this dude, holding down the fort, you know, he was working on his business or whatever. She, you know, pretty much put both herself into financial ruin, trying to support him. And then finally he ended up selling it. But by that time they were getting a divorce and then he ended up being hella rich and wealthy and marrying somebody else. And she was pissed. So... That is very specific example, and I don't want that to be you, but I get that kind of vibe. You know what I'm saying? I, I get that energy. And at the end, she killed him, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. Oh, maybe she didn't, girl. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she didn't kill him. I don't know. But, you know, that's a, that's a movie. So that's an extreme version. Like I said, this is a, this is a very realistic connection, right? Um, so... I just get that energy where up front, somebody's working, 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 working. The other person is doing, 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 doing. Then that fortune happens. And I feel like both of your lives change, but you both need one another. Like you both need one another. Or another example too, of course, not a great one, but Insecure uh, with Lawrence and Issa Rae's character. If you watch that show, if you don't, tiss, tiss, shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I kind of get that where there's a, a long pattern of like, what are you doing with yourself? Like, what are you gonna do why are you just sitting here why are your head in the clouds aren't you gonna do something like do something you know and then eventually that happens and i'm sorry i'm reading this the masculine way it's just out of habit i'm trying to break through it but um i talk to women almost all day so anyways um there is if it's a feminine it's the same way they they're sleeping on themselves but they are working but it just takes a long time to get through but then look it works out it really does i don't think that you're going to end up murdering this man we'll have to look into the challenges okay but i don't think that you're going to end up murdering this woman or this man um but yeah so that was super interesting i really i really enjoyed that actually so anyways sorry if you didn't <laughs> oops if you didn't but let's look into the quote-unquote good. What are some of the really positive aspects of this connection for pile one? Oh, yeah. The mother of pinnacle, pinnacles. This person treats you like a queen. Um, and I do feel like the two of you get a lot of work done. Judgment card arising. Like I said, there's a wake, there's an awakening that is sparked from this connection. You learn so much from this person. You learn so much from this connection. You learn about yourself, life, how you want to participate in it. Yeah, the transformation, scorpionic energy. So I really do feel like overall you will be very changed. Now, I want to say that this connection is super intense. You don't really have to worry about this person going anywhere, if that makes sense. Like, of course, you'll have your ups and downs that happens with any relationship but i'm really getting this super duper strong energy of you guys being able to um be loyal and extreme loyalty to one another um that's unshakable
unshakable. Wow, the Six of Cups. Speaking of which, you know, you guys are soulmates. And I feel like you'll always carry this friendly attitude towards one another. And again, even in this, even in this depiction, he's giving her flowers, you know. This person will always be sure to send you presents and make sure that you're taken care of. Um, if they have any extra money, they'll give it to you regardless of where your connection is. Um, you're just really good friends. Oh my gosh, the Ace of Cups. You truly love one another. Um, and I do think that you 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 and this person with all that Mercury energy I'm being called to, you and this person maybe feel like, man, was I ever going to find love? But then you do. You know, you you have it. You end up having the sex and the things. And the, I feel like maybe both of you feel like you're late bloomers with all that Saturn energy. But this person really awakens you to love. Oh my gosh, the magician. So... I really feel like this is an extremely intense connection. You got these two ones, 11-11, uh, or 1-1, one, one, which I, I, I saw 11-11, but regardless, you guys spark one another up. This certainly is a twin flame connection. Um, and like I said, you will feel safe and secure with this person. You'll be awakened to a lot of emotions. And with this Ace of Cups and, and all that synastry that we saw earlier, kind of how you literally fire each other up, you will be exposed to exposed to all of the range of emotions that come with love the passion the anger the res you know the forgiveness the arguing the really great great highs the really low low lows like you will you guys will experience this together um as kind of like i'm really getting with this energy this first love energy um even if you've been in relationships before i feel like maybe there was a detachedness to it but this person f makes you step wholly into yourself um especially again this fish this pisces energy so you guys are able to create your own world with one another um and, and maybe that's why reality hits it so hard because it's shattered it's like when you two are together nothing else matters but anytime you're apart then everything seems to come into play it's almost like you guys can feel pain in the real world for, with each other so you have to be careful with that neptunian energy uh, particularly if you know you have habits of addiction especially with the scorpio the Scorpio energy here, you know, you might find yourself in addictions and trying to just keep that high going. But I'm telling you this, that high never stays for long. And, and a lot of you I'm, I'm hearing specifically, it would be like, you would be like an off-brand addict. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I mean, I guess that's not funny, but like, you know, if we're going to make light of a, of a difficult situation, um, you'd be an off-brand addict. And why, by that, I mean, you would be like a pill popper, like, or you would be like a, a, a wineaholic. Like, you wouldn't be like a full-on alcoholic or nothing where you're just drinking spaka straight. Like, people would have to piece together that like, huh, you know, is, you've been popping a lot of pills. Like, are you cool? So you have to be super careful with that because I feel like you have an, addi you have an addictive quality that can easily be swept under the rug both of you uh for your masculine or for the masculine in this connection i feel like it would be more on the workaholic side where there's working 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 uh for the feminine i feel like again it would be one of those um kind of offbeat like i don't think that you would be strung out on heroin i i think that both and and not and this isn't a place of judgment especially if you're in recovery just keep that in mind but i don't see it being that type of addiction i'm just expressing that because you have to be super careful because everybody can see when you're on heroin People don't question as much when you're on freaking opioids, you know? So just be aware of that. Um, but again, this relationship would trigger those emotions. So like you have to be aware, you know, this is a highly transformative connection. Um, there will be ups, there will be downs for sure. But I do feel like you, you got, I'm hearing you got a friend in me from Toy Story. Um, and so maybe that's, there's like this childish nature to it. So I feel like you'll meet this person young. If you are young, then you'll meet this person, you know, soon. But if you haven't, if you're older, then you'll feel like you've known this person from a, for a very, very long time with the Six of Cups, or you did, <laughs> you did know them from a young age and you've just always been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you finally, you know, and when I say young age, I'm talking about, like 35 and under, you know, honestly 40 and under. I don't even want to put a cap on it there, but that's what I mean by young age. <laughs> we're living long and we're living large. So I do, the other thing that I feel too, the four swords. So there will be like some um, separations throughout this connection because you guys will have to like hear your own voice and see how check in with yourself see how you're feeling is kind of what i'm hearing but overall you will be able to create so much from this connection the two of you inspire the freak out of one another and you drive each other and you push one another um to do to do 
wonderful, masterful things. So I do get this overall energy of highly transformative connection. Um, and that's something that you look forward to. You When you're with this person, you, your luck is different. Um, it's crazy. Like when the moment you're with this person, everything just shifts and things start working out. <laughs> it's, I was picking up the deck to put the cards back in and I saw the sun card and the six of swords. So this connection just brings so much victory and so much overall abundance. It's honestly crazy. All right. So let's look at the challenges. What will be some of the challenges of this connection of this marriage, excuse me, not even connection, marriage. Yeah, it's just your bank account will increase with this with this marriage, both of you. On the Six of Swords, the Ace of Wands. Okay, so I am getting distance. I am getting travel. Didn't I say separation? I do feel like you guys will spend a lot of time apart, especially with all that Jupiter Sagittarius energy. You guys... You guys are apart for work and different passions, hobbies. I feel like both of you got access. Oh my gosh, the three of wands. That really is it. Both of you are being tested on trust. Like, can I trust this person when they're not in my sight? With that Scorpio energy, um, that transformation card, justice. Um, Because I do feel like, again, with the Sagittarius, Jupiter, and Pisces. Because Sagitt Jupiter rules Pisces. So, I... Uh, Oh, I, I did go into that. I did get into that. Sorry. But anyways, the Ace of Wands, like both of you require so much freedom. I feel like the feminine, you require freedom in your head. Like you require, you need alone time. I feel like you're a person who has to retreat. Like you can't be in everybody's energy. You might have Pisces in the seventh or something like that, or, or Neptune in the eighth or something where you just absorb people's energy. So you do have to disconnect um, at times. This person, if you're the masculine in this energy, um, then I feel like you have to travel, like you have to be gone. <laughs> you need to, you cannot be in one space for an extended period of time, um, which would work. But like I said, it's just like, okay, if he's, if, oh, if your masculine's been traveling for, I don't know, three months on some project and then he comes home, well, then now he's going to want to want to be all over you. But you're just like, dang, I've been dealing with the kids and everything while you were gone. Like, I need to sit down. Like, I can't take your energy right now. Well, now he's offended because he's like, man, I've been gone for three months. You don't even care. And you're like, no, it's not even about that. So that's kind of the energy that I'm seeing, you know, and because and that's <laughs> that is why there's so much Neptune because you guys are at a distance a majority of the time, a lot of this relationship happens in your head. Um, it happens in your imagination one way or another, you know. Um, and so it, when you come into contact with one another, it just seems like that reality can be shattered at times. Um, I do imagine with the Princess of Swords, another challenge is just very immature communication or not fully getting to the bottom of it. I feel, again, it's very tit for tat, this connection. It's like, you do something, I do something. You do something, I do something. You do something, I do something. And um, until it matures, right? But I just, I get that underlying kind of, I don't want to say petty, but eh, petty might be the word. The sun card. Because <laughs> you guys are evenly yoked and evenly matched. And then we have the king of pentacles. So it takes your masculine a minute to kind of get himself together i feel um and if you're the masculine watching this it takes a minute for your feminine to get it together like um they're very much again there was saturn and mars so mars is like go 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 saturn's like no 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 it's a leash so i imagine that this person is a saturn person but saturn pays off that's why i'm just like there will be the person that you end up marrying ultimately there will be so many ups and uh, ups and downs with this connection just because of the pace the overall pace somebody's running to go and this person's like you're holding up the process and they're like no i'm not and you're like yes you are <laughs> like no i'm not yes you are and i feel like you guys can go back and forth in that that scale for ever like your disputes and arguments can go on until the fire just runs out until you're like <sighs> Okay, well, 
do you want to watch tv like and i feel like nothing ever really gets resolved and that's why kind of some resentment can be built up with that scorpio because it's just like you know what doesn't look like we're gonna solve this whatever i'm just gonna tune out i'm gonna you know have my wine have my pills and they're gonna go on a long distance trip and then they're gonna be gone and then we're gonna miss each other and then we're gonna come back and then it's gonna be great for like a day and then they're gonna get on my nerves again and so i feel like there's a there's a maturity that has to come with this connection or else it can really stay in like this very back and forth kind of childish energy um very youthful i want to say youthful or adolescent that's the more appropriate term it's just adolescence it's it's halfway there like you're not completely wrong because you're not a child but you're not completely right because you haven't completely stepped out of ego with that ace of wands there um distance will be an issue but again both of you shine like both of you are doing your own thing this is something that i feel like can be overcome because these are super powerful energies but again look at this fire fire more you know fire fire and then the one libra scale you know so it's just you guys really ignite this passion in one another and so that can be a challenge because passion works two ways it works in the positive and in the negative it can be a great support or a grand cut down you know um so that's just something that you have to be aware of but i definitely feel like your partner is a lot slower in energies at times um and so you'll have to learn how to be patient and communicate in a mature manner but you guys are really friends like i said you love one another you love the crap out of one another it's it's really something um it's just gonna be that at times you guys don't communicate as effectively as you would like <laughs> so yeah so that's what we got so now let's move into the six <laughs> so if you're not 18 and over then click off uh, but if you are then let's have some fun so now we're going to look at some overall passion i just i know that there's probably gonna be like a lot of fire pinnacle energy is kind of what i'm getting um it's either like quick or it's like really like making love faces is that the king of pinnacles <laughs> so he's starting off with the king of pentacles here what did i say what did i say you saw it here folks um and it's crazy because this king of pentacles in this card and don't I, you know he's a little as you can see his hands a little up he's a little angry he, there's a little fire behind him um we, we're not gonna dig too deep into that right now um we're gonna pull the rest of the cards but i i don't get anything like abusive i would tell you but i do feel he likes to dominate the masculine likes to dominate in this connection whether you're the masculine watching this or um the feminine yeah the three of pinnacles <laughs> and yeah the seven of swords okay and then let's look at the other deck The four of wands. This person is, and again, <laughs> pile one, yeah, the, their energy is reflecting. Yeah, they're very possessive. Like, they're extremely possessive. So I do feel like as it shows in the sex, in the sex department, this person is extremely dominant. Um, they like to watch. Like, they'll be watching you and you won't know that they're watching you. Um, the four of pinnacles. And let's see. Yeah. I get this real in the Seven of Pentacles here. You, if you're the feminine in this energy, I, I really get that you make this person beg. Like they genuinely have to work for you <laughs> as far as like giving in. And that's a part. And again, it's like. Both of you get off on it. It's a part of the foreplay. I don't know if you'd ever articulate it that way, but I do get a lot of makeup to break up with the Ten of Swords to the Three of Pentacles. So it's just like masculine does something. The feminine's like, oh, <laughs> you don't understand me. Like, I don't want you. I can't look at you right now. And kind of goes off. And then Three of Pentacles, it's like, okay, well, let's work out. Let's, let's make it up. And then it ends up being super romantic. And again, this person is either like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, or it's love it has to be love making because again you haven't seen each other in a while and b they feel like as they did something wrong so they have to apologize but i do feel like again it just comes up that work does interfere with y'all's connection so 
I, that is something with the four of pentacles that I see quite clearly here. Like this person will be working and you'll be like, golly, like why won't they, like you haven't been in bed or like you haven't been to bed. It's two o'clock. Like, are you coming to bed? Um, and, and it's crazy because I felt like it was just going to be more, how do I word this? I thought that this was going to be more sex based, right? Because like, that's the sex part. But even in this reading, the work interfered. So I'm like, I have no choice but to address that. Like work does interfere with y'all sex life, which I do feel is extremely frustrating at times um, to the Ten of Swords. So your sex life will <laughs> be a point of contention, I, I will say at times. But the makeup of it is is really, really great. Um, and you guys do have a passion for one another. Um um <laughs> i don't want to say what i'm gonna say but i i really you gotta watch you if you pick pile one you know we talked about the affairs and all the other stuff i clearly see that between this connection just because it's so the sex is so erratic um yeah we got the two of swords here so and I, and I can't help but be drawn to this affair happening in the background. like, And it just has to do with distance, travel, money. This person supports people. And at the same time, they're super controlling and possessive over you. Because sometimes I don't think that they're necessarily doing the right thing. Yeah, the five of swords at the bottom of the deck. Um, this person has a very... I don't know when, when they mature out of it. But they just have a very childish, like, I don't know um relationship with sex and I don't know when they grow out of it so I do see it being a point of kind of like contention at times to be honest especially with the seven of swords there's a lot of secrets in y'all sex life um because I just feel like work takes the president um <laughs> I'm gonna say this too oh my gosh I'm sorry about one but I just if I see it, I feel like I, I have to say it this person might be like a little smaller than you would like I'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna dig into that but I just feel like this person there's something about them that's a little bit dissatisfying so they fulfill a lot of other things they definitely fulfill that wallet but it just seems like there's something lacking in the sex department and they would really like um they like to watch they get like a, i get like a voyeurism of, from them they really prefer to watch you they're not as necessarily engaged in the act of sex so that's kind of Mm, it, it feeds into that Neptune energy again like they're they're very much uh, they like imagination I feel like both of you enjoy this connection more in y'all's head for at, at times um particularly when you are apart but even the hermit card here so I just get this energy of like this person is um there's there's some sort of disconnect at times at different times in the connection um yeah so let me see. I'm like, Spirit, do you want me to say anything else? Let me see if I can get anything else. The world card. So, and the knave of swords. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that popped up twice. They're spying. They're spying. The seven of pentacles. There's a lot of gaps. The three of the empress. That's what I was saying. You control this connection. Like, I feel like you make this person beg for you. You make this person work for you. Like, if they piss you off, like, you really make them be like, well, listen, you're going to take some time. You know, you're in time out. Either come correct or don't come at all. Um, and you hold this person to that standard. And so I really feel like you kind of keep the range. You're definitely the type of, you're definitely going to be the type of wife to put them on punishment. So again, it, it, there's a lot of maturing that has to happen on both ends through this connection. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, this is a mutual connection, you know? So there's page energies on both sides. So you have to be aware of that when you start going through these connections, like you guys will really have to learn how to communicate because withholding sex is not actually a, a good practice. Um, because yeah, it's like withholding food. It is just as traumatizing to 
the masculine. So it's not really an effective thing. It seems like the thing to do a majority of the time. And again, I'm not saying to keep caving. I'm not saying that either, but you're going to have to learn how to set boundaries, healthy boundaries and healthy expectations through this connection. The two of you will, or else it'll just kind of spiral if you guys don't, but you'll always be friends. Like I said, you'll, you guys love the crap out of one another. It just, sometimes it gets a little messy because this person's focus is elsewhere and your focus is elsewhere and nobody wants to really communicate, you know, so yeah, so that's what I'm getting for that. Um, let's go ahead and move into your overall um, advice. I actually did not pick a card for this. I didn't pick a deck for the advice. All right. Okay. Just three cards of advice, spirit. high priestess so just understand that follow your intuition and this is a spiritual connection again with that neptune oh my gosh the wheel of fortune you will have ups and you will have downs with this but it is solid your finances will increase with this person trust and believe uh, particularly if you're having to wait for them to finish doing what they're supposed to do the three of cups so be mindful of other interferences within this connection at times. And I feel like that's for both of you. Um, you can come, you, you know, you can come at me in the comment section. I'm just reading what I see. This is a general. It doesn't have to apply to everybody. But there are a lot of great times. There are a lot of great times in this connection. You guys spend um a lot of happiness and joy, but if this person is building their empire, it does take time. But by the end of it, you will be very fortunate and very abundant. Um you won't ever have to worry about this person. I, I am hearing that you will have a kid, um, at least one, possibly two kids with this person. From one to, I know this is a huge range, but um, depending on how many kids you have already, but you will at least have one kid with this person. Um, so you'll always be tied to this person one way or another, and they will always take care of you. You will Once you meet this person, you will never have to worry about money again once they pop off, whether they're with you or not. They will make sure that you're taken care of. That's a point blank period promise. So as much as they might get on your nerves and you guys might go back and forth, they will be quick to hit you with a deposit, period. <laughs> so ask yourself what your love language is and <laughs> see if that qualifies because I do think that that's it. So Spirit is saying to just be patient and be aware that there will be ups and downs in this connection. But I do think that you'll always land on the up and up. Um, so yeah, so that's what I got for you, pile number one. I hope that this resonated. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, drop a comment and what you thought about this reading in the comment section below. Um, I truly appreciate you. Follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, that information is in the description box below. And if you like these 18 plus readings, I would really appreciate if you were able to donate to the channel. If you can, you are not. You don't have to, but I cannot monetize the 18 plus readings because uh, YouTube is funky. So if you just like to donate to the channel or just show some loving or even send a prayer, um, you can do that through Cash App. <laughs> I guess not the prayer part, but you see what I'm saying. We got the dollar sign, capital A, capital B, lowercase EV224. Or if you PayPal is more up your speed, that information is in the description box below also. So thank you so much, guys. Peace until next time. All right, so let's move on. To pile number two. Hello, pile number two. It is AD with Cosmostrology, and I'm going to be doing your pick a card reading. So this is your future. This is your future marriage, okay? I did future spouse. I'm probably going to link that in the description box below so you can catch that. I highly recommend you watch that first because that was the who. This is focusing on more of the what. Like, what is the actual marriage going to be like? So without any further ado, um, let's hop into it. We're going to be looking at the synastry, so how the planets line up with one another, how you trigger one another, um, the good sides of this connection, the positive traits, the challenges, um, the sex, and then we'll be giving advice at the very end of your your reading so yeah i did want to highlight and say i don't know if you're new to the channel or not but i do not hold back so i try to be real and be honest as i can so if you like the foo foo you know oh it's gonna be peaches and roses and daisies and cream then i might not be the reader for you okay so just i, I you've been warned you've been warned so let's hop into it yes this is a Yu-Gi-Oh card <laughs> No, it doesn't necessarily add anything to the reading. I just thought that they were cute little markers. So, ooh, you got Guardian Keyist. So look at that mar uh, that mermaid energy. So I'm going to put that down there. 
So let's see um, where the astrology cards. Alrighty. So first we're going to be looking at uh, synastry between y'all's connection. So I can just get an overall feel of what planets are activated <laughs> within this marriage. I keep saying connection, but it's marriage. Your, your marriage. Okay. So K2 starting off at the top. So this is karmic. <laughs> and don't you forget it. <laughs> Um, I'm definitely getting past life energy. Oh my gosh. North node. Yeah. You are certainly meant to cross paths with this person. You are certainly meant to learn from this person. You owe this person and this person owes you. Y'all have come back into this life, um, with the full intention of marrying one another to fulfill y'all's karmic debt, Uranus. So I got Aquarius energy represented here too. Um, I want... I want to see. Yeah, I kind of want some more planets. Venus. Okay, I don't need it. <laughs> Spirit's like, all right. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I'm chuckling to myself. But um, anyways, so I really get this energy of th this is one of your soul's purpose. Like you are somebody with, Ve you have a Rahu Venus or a K2 Venus, meaning this is one of your main reasons for incarnating in this life form in this body is to meet this person and to transform and learn from this person i'm assuming so now let's look at the other planets um yeah but you this this is major for you pal two this is major 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 and if you pick pal two um and the who is your spouse reading you know it'll be interesting to see how those energies play out overall so you got mercury Mercury, um, Pluto, <laughs> huge transformative. This is definitely you are marrying your twin flame, soulmate, um, twin flame energy more so than soulmate because this will be a challenging connection. You will be different. Neptune, soulmate energy. Yeah, of course. And then we got Uranus again. All right. So there's really something quite wild and unexpected about this connection. Um, it might take both of you off guard. So now I'm going to look to see what the connect, the connecting energies between the two are. The Six of Wands. The King of Swords. Yeah. <laughs> and if you pick, but yeah, for the who. I really hope that you follow y'all's numbers so you can get the full, um, the full, you know, scope of everything. What do we have at the bottom? Yeah, revolution here. I'm sorry. I'm just looking. All right. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah, this connection is going to be something. All right. This marriage is certainly going to be uh, work it, it, in the most basic of terms, soul work, a lot of soul work and a lot of soul growth. Um, I feel like however this connection unravels, it's very unexpected for both of you. So perhaps um, somebody's already in a connection or both of you are in a connection or there's like a major age difference or you guys live across the globe from one another. Like there is some obstacle that is just absolutely insane, but your souls are like, this is my person. This is my person. I know it. I know this person. I love this person. I need to be with this person. And so you really sign on to y'all's karmic fate. So this is probably the most pal one was pretty karmic but this is extremely karmic you and this person had a history you and this person's soul have history you came specifically looking for one another without realizing it and that's where this unexpected uranus energy i do feel like uranus is okay so it's saturn and rahu so i do feel like this connection will last for a very long time some of you might already be in this marriage or be in this connection uh but it's volatile uh, because it's ruled by Saturn and Rahu. Saturn, the planet of discipline. Rahu, which is the north node, um, which is the the north side of the moon. And it's like the the head of a dragon with no body. So it just moves all over the place. That's why you'll never meet two Aquarians that are the same. Um, because that is what... I'm sorry. I, 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 hold on. I'm, my brain is like raining. So my brain is kind of all over the place. Uh, but... 
that is that Aquarian energy of that unexpectedness. That combination equals Aquarius, also Uranus, you know, in this astrology. Oh, I'm sorry. I just subscribed to Vedic, so maybe that will help. I subscribed to Vedic, so my placements might be a little bit different from yours. But the explanations and the energy should read about the same. But I'm getting like there's just this unpredictability overall to this connection. Um, and there is um there's always a, a mystery with Neptune. Again, there's something elusive about this connection. I, I remember picking that up in Pile 2 before. Like there's this elusiveness where it just seems like sometimes it's good and then sometimes it's just like well what just happened here um where did this person go and it really you guys signed on to solve some of y'all's soul's issues this person is triggering you and forcing you to to step into a place of real self-love and understanding of unconditional love um i do feel like there will be some communication issues at time but that is one of the really cool things with this person that you get to explore is like you guys communicate very easily at times, there's a lot of success, but at other times, you guys are speaking completely different languages. And maybe literally, like I said, maybe literally you might be culturally different from this person. Um, but I, I really get this overall energy of this, this connection ends up changing you in a very unexpected way. I want to say the one thing that I am getting, you're not going to realize that you've signed on to this person until much later. You're not going to realize how deep the karma cuts. Like, I feel like maybe the whole relationship will be triggering somewhat, but eventually it's going to stumble on you and be like, oh my gosh, I recognize you. We have some business to take care of. We have some business to handle. Um... And yeah, I'm being honest. It, it's deep business. It's real deep business. Um, let's go ahead and, and look into your relationship. And I remember this happening in pile two. Also, I was like, there's a lot of secretive energy with this connection. <laughs> um, where it's like, I'm not, I can't fully, I feel like I fully can't tune into it all the way. Which is totally fine, you know, perhaps it's none of my business, but I certainly feel that way about your masculine or the connection. It's like, it's super private with the King of Swords. Like, the, mm, we'll, we'll look into it. We will look into it. Yeah, I feel like somebody in this connection has a lot of Aquarius. Um, all right, so now let's look into the quote unquote good. Let's look into like the healthy part, the healthier parts of the relationship, what you really like about the relationship, the eight of swords. So I am getting that it really helps you overcome a lot of your insecurities or this person makes you feel very safe um, is what I'm hearing. Um, again, at times, both of you have felt misunderstood, but you guys are able to really see one another, the nine of swords and the world card. This person is very protective of you against the world. And I feel like you like that, the Ten of Wands. Um, yeah, the Queen of Swords or the Mother of Swords. And then one last card. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. The Ace of Cups at the bottom of the deck. So you really do love this person. I do feel like there's genuine... Like I said, this is karmic. Like, you genuinely love one another. You share this energy with one another. Um... It's really nice. Like you feel very whole. You feel very understood about this person. I do feel something about this connection says that this person protects you from the world. So maybe they don't want you to work or they allow you to be a stay at home mother um, or a stay at home father. If that's something that you're interested in. But I feel like this person allows you um, to detach from the world. Like you don't really have to have a whole lot of outside responsibilities other than what you're passionate about at the, at, at the time. Now, my energy with that and kind of what I'm getting with your synastry is you have to be careful that this person isn't, um, mm, what is it like taking you from the world to where they are isolating you. That's the word I'm looking for. I feel like you're a person who wants to be isolated, but you're going to have to be very mindful about how much you let this person isolate you. Um, because this person is very, they have a very dominant and kind of controlling energy. I don't want to, I don't want to allude to say that this person is abusive or anything, but with all that karmic energy that came out, um, you guys trigger one another. <laughs> and so you bring out the best and the worst qualities. So that is something to be aware of. We will look at the cha challenges. This is the positive side, but I just already feel the need to be like, especially with this 10 of wands, I already feel the need to be like, it gives you what you want as far as this sense of oneness and you and this person, are the only two that exist and it's you 
against the world, baby. But at the same time, they will have a habit of coddling you at times um, and treating you like a baby, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Like you want to be treated like a baby, but at times you're like, I'm grown. So that is really where those communication errors will come in. You understand one another, but you have different ways of expressing them at different points in time is really what I'm hearing. But this person helps you feel safe. I, I really get that energy. They really make you feel safe. Um, this is the type of person that if, if you felt like you were in danger of some sort, they would come out of nowhere and save you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's very much this damsel in distress type energy, the 10 of wands, and they like to be the hero. They like to be the victor. So they do kind of come in and swoop in and swoop you off your feet and, you know, um, protect you with the nine of swords. So I also get that this person eases your anxiety. I might have said that was the nine of wands earlier. My bad. But same, I'm still getting the same energy because I'm going more off of the pictures just in general. But anyways, um, I do feel like this person, again, has a way of easing your anxieties. They, they really have a way of easing your anxieties and, and making you feel like everything is okay. And I feel like that's all at times you've wanted and you really love that about them. They just, they soothe you. They have a very, very soothing and calming energy. And I feel like that's perfect at times for when you can tear yourself apart. You might have struggled from extremely low self-esteem issues or you've so, so struggled from just very difficult childhood traumas or soulhood traumas. <laughs> um and so i feel like in a, in a place you've had to become very cold and detached and this person helps you work through those thoughts of what makes you feel that way um and really helps you get in touch with that inner child and heal those wounds i feel like they provide that space for you and this or more importantly this relationship provides that space for you because i do feel like sometimes this person is the trigger you know what i'm saying like that's just that's just that you know um like I said, we don't do no foo-foo readings. We're going to try to get into it. So now let's look at the challenges of this connection. Um, but yeah, they do. They know how to lick your wounds is, is what I'm hearing. What could be some of the challenges? <laughs> the Hierophant to the universe. So the Hierophant is Taurus energy, it's fourth house um, energy, no, excuse me, it's second house energy. And so I really do feel like they want you to be home, like they they, they shield you from the world, like I said, the Hierophant in the universe. Um, this person feels like they know best. But even with this cow, they're very fertile, like they, they offer a lot of abundance too, you know, the Hierophant, they, you're well taken care of, you're well, you, that's the, I'm, I'm really getting this imagery of Rapunzel, you know, you, you are well taken care of, but you're just like, there's a world out there that I want to explore. Or even with that mermaid, right, earlier, um, Ariel, right, where it was Trident and all that other stuff where it's like, I, I, there's, I want to be a part of a different world and this person's like, no, you don't understand the world out there, like, you need to stay here, like, let me protect you, the two of swords. And I feel like sometimes when you guys get into that energy, that power struggle, it's really hard. Um, and I get this, I'm getting strong Taurus energy from this person. I think that popped out in Pile 2. So I'm getting really, really, really strong Taurus energy. Um, and then we have Venus. So we, yeah. But regardless, when it's hard to get them to change their minds on things. Once they've decided on something, that's it. It's very difficult for them to budge the five of pentacles. Yeah, you just feel at times very isolated from the world within this connection. Um, the Prince of Wands and the Nine of Cups. Yeah, you'll have to be careful. And then we have the Seven of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Okay. Neptune rearing its head um and then again that stand that the aerial so maybe you are uh, like you feel like a mermaid or you know that <laughs> what is it um ooh, it was a little mermaid aerial or I can't even remember guys but I just feel like there's a I guess the way that you can look at it is it like after the little mermaid breaks out of the land and she's with Eric um, all she knows is Eric. That's the only person that she knows is Prince Eric. Um, sorry if you haven't seen the Little Mermaid guides. Uh, and so I just feel like it kind of feels like a trap. You'll have to be careful because this person, like I said, they know how to lick your wounds. The devil energy has not popped out. And so that's why I'm just like, and the Ace of Cups is there. I don't want you to think that, I don't want you to go labeling this person a narcissist and a, and a this and a that. Because again, you guys have karma. You guys bring out different feelings for every for every 
for every piece of your soul. You can label it what you want, but it is what it is. But this person has a really good way of like knowing when you're bad, knowing when they've done bad, knowing when they've hurt you, and then coming in and making some grand apology, spending money on you, kind of taking care of you in that way and then going kind of doing the exact same thing like with the world card I just feel like you're in this continuous loop of just being like okay we're really happy you said you're gonna pay attention to me you said you're gonna take a break off of work then that time comes then they don't do it then you're like well now I feel upset and you look around and you don't really have that many friends anymore because like you've been isolated in that connection and then they come back and they're just like oh I'm sorry I bought you this I brought you this we're doing this together they come they spend time and then it starts over again so Please just be mindful. These tarot readings, you know, you can change your future. You can really change anything. You're not bound by this reading. So if you're hearing this and this sounds like a horror story to you, um, then it, it possibly is because you probably lived it before. Um, if you've done the past life readings, you might have been a pile two or then. Um, and with all that karmic energy, you have gone through this before, but I feel like you're healing to avoid this if this doesn't sound like something that you want. We'll really come from learning how to lick your own wounds. Like you, you are not, you can't be this damsel in distress. I'm sorry, pal two, for, for getting this interpretation, but I just feel like that's what this person teaches you regardless is that you have to be your biggest champion if you don't feel that way right now watching this this reading and this reading doesn't sound like anything appealing to you then that is really where the heart is that's what the whole point of this connection is is to get you to self-love and first unconditional love but unconditional love within self and then you can express that outwardly so just be mindful of where you are and how you feel about yourself and how you feel about things because this can easily happen if you're not feeling like a thousand percent and you're kind of um, not necessarily clinging, but you are holding on to one sole person for validation. And also, I get this too, and I'm saying this out of love and respect, but I am with this Taurus and this Four of Pentacles. There might be a little bit of laziness from you. Maybe you like don't want to work. You, you've never had much ambitions. Um, you've kind of just given it all to the masculine or given it all to your partner. They can have all the ambition. You'll just be along for the ride. Well, if you, if you, you know, kind of pin your what is it your thing to this to this horse if you hand yourself to this horse well then now you're bound by that ride that trip so you have to find your own your own rhythms in life you have to find your own you know balances and stuff in life is really what i'm getting um the seven of cups because a lot of this connection can happen up in the air there could be a lot left unsaid if you don't communicate very strongly in this connection what your dreams and desires are but i really get this overall energy of just not making it so much of a fantasy where you miss out on the world, where you miss out on things. Um, because this person, they will have an active life. They will be working. They will be doing and going or whatever. So um, you'll walk out into the world and be like, dang, what did I, I missed out on everything. Um, I'm also hearing that there could be a lot of kids involved, maybe possibly four kids. Maybe you're somebody who wants a lot of kids or you have a lot of kids. And so you end up having having to stay at home and take care of home. And, you know, the world's moving. So the kids are older now or whatever. And you're just like, oh, I need to go get a job. It's time for me to get a job. And you're just like, dang, I don't know what to do. Like, I, shiz, I haven't worked in 15 years or, or what have you. So this is just something to be mindful of in this connection um, to make sure that you stay present. Stay within the world. Keep your friendships. Don't super isolate yourself. You might have a lot of Pisces energy or a lot of Venus and Pisces, Piscean placements. You might feel like a mermaid or something. I just feel like you might end up swimming yourself into a cave and you're not going to know what happened, but I'm telling you what it could possibly be. I'm, I am. I'm really trying to, you can avoid all, you can avoid a majority of this if you want to. <laughs> um if you do the work too, if this is something that you, it sounds like you don't want, if that sounded perfect to you, then screw everything that I just said, Skip, you know, screw through that tangent. But if that meant something to you, then that's something to be aware of. Cause you and this person will, you'll, you'll build a world for yourself. All right, I'm done. Let me get off of it. I think everybody gets it. All right. Um, now we're looking at the sex, <laughs> the fun stuff, hopefully the fun stuff. All right. I'm losing decks left and right, guys. They just walk off. All right. What is the sex going to be like in this within this marriage? Seven of Wands. Okay. Ooh. The Ten of Wands. 
yeah, this person is very, again, they're very possessive. There'll be a lot of passionate, like, I feel like it starts slow and then they really, like, they'll whine and dine and then they'll just get in there. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. Ooh. The name of chalices. Um, I feel like there's another one, Spirit. We got one more from this deck. Um, This came out earlier from pile one. So let me see if there's another one. The Two of Pentacles. Okay. So, and the underlying energy, the Nine of Swords. All right. There, there, there's a lot of heady energy that happens with this person. So you really have to tune into your body. Look at how hesitant this person is. I feel like this person is shy at first. Like they really like to kind of... Um, I don't know, like they're, they're the type of person to, poof, how do I word it? They make foreplay, foreplay last all day, but it's like real subtle stuff. Like, you know, when they, they come see you and like you're, you're cooking and all this other stuff and they'll like grab you real quick or just like whisper something really nasty in your ear. Keep going about their day, you know? <laughs> They'll keep going about their day, not mention it, not do it again. And then maybe you're doing something else. You're behind the kids and they'll come do it again. And then once all that has happened all day and they've kind of teased you and gotten you all up in your brain and all that good stuff, then they pounce. Okay. They pounce. They get in that thing. Okay. Um, I feel like the something that bothers you um, in this connection is something that you have to work with sex wise is it's it's either all or nothing like i feel like this person's form of foreplay is kind of like that hinted and then they get into it i don't know how much they actually give time to the actual play, foreplay act like this person might not be a huge fan of oral or something like they might be something like that so you might have to like be like well if you don't give it to me then i'm not giving it to you period um let's keep digging let's keep digging The King of Wands, boom. So yeah, this person is certainly very fat, passionate and they're very dominant. The Eight of Cups. <laughs> oh, I think this popped in and when I did your future spouse reading is like, you know, again, the Eight of Cups. There might be other people involved in this connection at times. Just putting that out there. And I think if this connection is so hot on, because with the Ten of Swords here, I really do see there might be some sort of dis dissatisfaction with the sex within the marriage. So, you know, look at her. You see him in the back hating and her with the young thing. So, I feel like that might be one of your escapes, honestly, in this connection. If you don't do the work to, like, keep, an, keep a pulse on the outside world, you know? And then the Ace of Cups. That's beautiful. Two, and then I feel like there's maybe one more. Okay, great. The five of pentacles and the seven of pentacles, this, this is at the bottom of the deck of the last reading too. So your sex life, pile number two, it will have its moments and it will have its good moments and it'll have its bad moments, but I can say this and you can disagree or disagree with me. I'm not here to argue with you. You will be sexually satisfied if you really want to, regardless of if, if it's from this person or not. This person works a lot and that's why they're so possessive and jealous of you because at the same time, they're, they're aware that you kind of get down with, they're aware that when they're gone, sometimes you probably have friends. I don't know if they can ever, I'll, I'll say this, I don't think that they can ever like hold you to it but they suspect it but i don't think that they have any proof they never you never leave a trace okay um i know some people might not like this reading i, I apologize but i'm I, that's just what i see i mean this is realistic like i'm telling you i don't necessarily believe in fairy tales and all that stuff i'm not projecting but i ask spirit to be real with me um and so this is kind of what i'm getting especially with the five of pentacles so at times it will be good and at times you'll feel like dang like does this person really like love me or are they just using me like you definitely feel that way but again all of it comes from self-worth all of it comes from like you not caving into this nine of swords energy and you have to know your worth before you step into any marriage contract but again you have karma with this individual this is not meant to be a smooth ride you are marrying your twin flame um that is challenging that's just how that happens if you don't want to then <laughs> you know okay you know just ignore this reading discard it you don't have to listen to me at all <laughs> at all <laughs> 
<laughs> but if you're really curious about, you know, what is your marriage going to be like, it'll be super passionate, it'll be super intense, but it will be extremely triggering. Like it, it will. Um, but I do imagine that there will be affairs more so on your end. Maybe he, maybe there's an affair on his end here with this 10 of swords. But again, it's, it's two can play at that game tip for tag. And it's all going to get you to the point of self-love. That is the whole point of this connection. So if you don't feel that way right now, um, then th be prepared. If you do, then maybe you can pick another pile. <laughs> maybe. Um, all right. So now we're going to look at your advice. What cards did I use for advice? Oh yeah, this one. I like have a little list so I don't have to think while I'm doing this because my brain, but I didn't do a, I didn't do a brand job. Was this the eight of wands? Your advice for this connection or this marriage, excuse me. The king of swords. <laughs> excuse me. The three of wands. Yeah. And then the bottom of the deck, we have the empress. <sighs> See, thank you, spirit. Thank you. You have to learn how to sit in your own power. Do not let this partner boss you don't let them boss you you have to communicate you have to be open you have to be honest with the king of swords here this person responds to logic they do not respond to emotions they don't that's why we saw that friction in the mercury earlier they don't respond to tears they do respond to tears but not in the way that you'll want them to like they'll be like oh my gosh i hear you i want to pray for you but they won't change their behavior so you have to be very 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 forceful with how you set boundaries in this connection you or the feminine here you have to set the boundaries the masculine will act accordingly at least that's how i'm picking up on this you know um and that doesn't matter what your gender is and i am hearing that spirit with this three of wands is like you have to keep your options open do not just completely um submerge yourself in this connection um because you'll wake up one day and be like crap what happened to the world? You know, your kids will be grown and you'll be an empty nester. And like, you know what I'm saying? You That's that's a feeling that I really feel like spirit wants you to avoid if you can. Like you can work to do that or else, you know, you just rack up more karma with this person, especially with the three of wands. Spirit is saying to continue to explore, continue to be curious, continue to travel, continue to do what you want. Yes, this person has a jealous streak. Um, and of course, we saw that they're very protective of you. They want you to be in a bubble. They, they know you're story they know your trials they want to protect you from that but at the same time you have to know how to set boundaries to be like i know that you're trying to protect me but right now i feel very close i feel very caged okay um so spirit is saying that the the onus is on you viewer watching this um to set those boundaries with the empress card um you are meant to have children with this with this person for sure uh, but they will, if you let them, they will dictate and boss, but you have a stronger energy. <laughs> you have the, you have the actual stronger energy. This person is just in that masculine ding and if, in that masculine wave. And if you don't question them, then they think that they're not questioned. They'll just keep going, doing what they were doing before. They won't stop. So that is really what I'm getting for you. So again, thank you so much, Pal3, for tuning into this reading. I hope that this resonated. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. Um, and if you'd like to book a personal reading with me, that information is in the description box below. If you like these 18 plus readings, I cannot monetize them through YouTube. So if you could please consider um, donating to the channel, this is my cash app, dollar sign, capital A, capital B, low, lowercase EV224. Um, and that could be a dollar, five dollars, or just a prayer, guys. I will accept any and all forms of energetic love and currency. So I appreciate that. And if PayPal is more up your speed, that information is in the description box below. I appreciate you, Pal2. Peace until next time. Okay. Let's get it. And last but not least, we have our pal three. So I am AD. This is Cosmo Astrology. Welcome to my pick a card. And this is for um, what is your future marriage? I already did what, who your future spouse is. I will link that reading in the description box below. Highly suggest that you watch that reading first and then find this reading. Um, and... Yeah, so sorry. I was like, okay, what are we looking into today? So we're going to be looking at the overall synastry of this connection. That means what planets are activated between this. We're going to be looking at the good 
the positive sides, the healthy sides of this connection, the challenges that you have to overcome in this connection, and then the six, okay? And we will end on some advice cards for you for this connection. So let's hop into it. Oops, let me remove this past you, Gil card. Excuse me. So let's hop into it for us, pal three. Um, this is the steamroid, okay? That, these are Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They don't add or subtract from the reading. I just think that they're cute. <laughs> so let's um, hop into it. So let's start with the Sinistry. Um, I keep like just putting the cards down when I'm done with them. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Please remember I subscribe to Vedic Astrology, but because it's Sinistry, it's going to do the planet. So it really shouldn't, the placements won't matter. Uh, but I'm just throwing that out there for my explanations of the cards. Okay. So I saw the part, part of fortune increase, so I do imagine that this will be abundant, but it didn't come out, so I'm not going to take it. But I did, it did flash. It did flash at me. Oh, Pluto transformation. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so definitely <laughs> Pluto, Neptune. Those are all signs of karmic relationships. Um, so this will be hugely transformative. And um, we're going to keep looking at what other planets could be involved. Uranus. So unexpected changes. Aquarius could be there too. Scorpio. Um, we got grand try and blessings oh period and oh yeah that's not even the the one that i saw earlier and i feel like one let me get one more for the grand trine um can we clarify that grand trine please k2 okay <laughs> great <laughs> neptune great didn't necessarily <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that didn't clarify so i see i see what spirit is on right now um and especially with this uranus to pluto transformation um this is going to be a very unexpected connection um and this is karmic so you might have a venus k2 conjunction or something like that we got sun here wow both of you experience some form of ego death in this connection um so i take that as like an ascension or an awakening um, you guys change a lot. Mars, so very much twin flame energy with the with the fire signs coming out here. Um, but this connection is very abundant. Moon. Wow. Wow. So we got the sun and moon. That's really interesting. And then we got Uranus at the bottom of the deck again. So very unexpected. Um, this connection could receive a lot of attention with Uranus there. Um, again, and Uranus is the grand awakener. So you will unlock a lot of life mysteries with life's with K2 sitting over there. Life's South node, life's debts. Um, you will unlock a lot. So we got Pluto sun. This is for the best. So I do imagine that there's a lot of trining energy in this connection. Um, <laughs> and there's the challenge. And then we see the three of wands. So we got the four of pentacles that tried to pop out. Oh, I see the dog there. There's certainly a loyalty within this connection. You guys might have Saturn. I'm hearing the spirit. There might be Saturn that could be involved um, as a high sinistry in the ace of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Thank you, spirit. Um, so that's the card. That's a card that didn't make it out. Um, but spirit wants you to know that this is long term. You will probably stay married to this person through everything. Um, I do imagine that there will be conflicts at times and these conflicts will involve really just different desires. So, so it, it feels like at times in this connection, some person is going to be like, I, we have to turn left. And the other person's like, no, we have to turn right. Um, and when you guys hit butt heads like that, it's really difficult. Um, to kind of because both of you are very strong with the eight of wands here so sometimes you guys will be you you guys will feel like you are competing with one another um but when you're on the same track and you guys are like really on the same wavelength you guys go super fast you guys achieve a lot of wish fulfillment there are a lot of blessings in this connection with double uranus that's aquarius energy star card so it's extremely lucky and fulfilling connection but there are major major changes um i do say one thing that screws Dreams out from your pile is the passion that's involved with Pluto, Mars, and Grand Trine Blessings. I feel like your sex section is going to be something for the books um, because there is such high passion towards this connection, especially with Eight of Wands being a, con a connecting energy. This is such a fat. It, it doesn't move fast because of all that Saturn and loyalty. You guys build that. But once you are in this marriage, the marriage is like boom, 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 boom. You know, the moment that you take vows, it's like everything changes. I am 
being called to the sun and the moon. So we have the divine masculine energy here and the divine feminine energy here. Um, at times they might feel like they're at war because the feminine is just as strong as the masculine and the masculine is just as spiritual and understanding and nurturing as the feminine. You know, you, they match one another. Um, both of you have challenged each other to change your perspective of self, life, all that good stuff. And I feel like with Uranus, it's it was hella unexpected. Um, but this is somebody that you certainly shared a past life with, but I want to say you came to this current life to reap the benefits of your past life's karma, especially with the Saturn energy just being looming over this, like you've worked for this connection. You guys have certainly known one another before, shared past lives. This is such an unexpected meeting. It moves forward in an unexpected way, but you guys do complement one another like the sun and the moon. The one thing that I am also getting with the sun and the moon is like they share very little time together right so the sun is the sun is the sun is the sun it has to light up the world the moon is the moon it has to illuminate the nighttime so but sometimes you can't see when the sun is rising the moon is setting and vice versa so i, I feel like that's going to be a theme in the connection where you're just on this rotate rotation where like that beautiful golden hour that dawn when you when you guys finally meet in the middle i mean it's a beautiful golden solar shot solar plexus just this beautiful radiant energy but then when the sun is doing its thing and the moon is doing its thing y'all aren't on the same page you know what i'm saying like y'all got y'all's own duties to perform um oh yeah and, and that's what i'm getting to with the uranus there's a, a crap ton of independence within this connection um both of you travel but you might travel apart a lot of the times um you travel together and you travel apart, but you guys are not, you, you don't spend every waking hour with one another for sure. But there's a lot of passion, a lot of fire inspired in this connection and a lot of changes come about in this connection. Um, both of you will be different people by the time this connection like takes off. Um, if that makes sense. And if you watch pile three and the last one, that makes sense. If that was a mirroring energy, it just, that just goes to show, that just goes to show that you and that person were both highly transformative, um, through the, through y'all, when y'all met each other to who you are, when you become married, which takes a long time with all that Saturn energy and the dog, which was friend. Oh yeah. And the dog came out in pile three. Yeah. So that's just all that <laughs> just double confirmation. So there's a loyalty here, but this connection takes a long time to go through. And then it's so unexpected how it actually unfolds um even if you think you know you don't know is what i'm hearing from spirit okay so we're going to look at the good so the positive sides of this connection why do i keep losing my daggone decks okay so what are really the positive, healthy sides of this connection? Oh, the Seven of Pentacles. Um, it's very grounded. It takes a lot of time, that Saturn energy. There's a deep commitment. Like, I feel like both of parties are equally invested in seeing how this turns out. You know, like, like, I don't know what's going on here, but like, I'm certainly tuned in. On the Page of Swords, I do feel like there's a child that comes out of this connection for sure. Um, oh my gosh, we got the Empress. <laughs> So there might be a couple kids that come out of this connection. You meant to have children with this person, at least two. <laughs> the two of cups. My goodness. Oh, wow. It's interesting because this really didn't, this familial energy didn't necessarily come out in the other two piles. So it really feels like you're meant to like nurture this. Oh, yeah, but it was the sun and the moon. See, y'all are really the divine masculine, divine feminine, the paternal and the maternal the divine dad and the divine mom is really what I'm hearing. So there's specifically two little souls that want to come through the two of y'all's connection. So I really feel like that's a positive and that that's a positive thing in this connection. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One I'm sensing is a Libra and the other one is probably an Aries. They might be opposites. Um, I don't know why, but we'll, we'll look into that. We'll, we'll dig into that um, to a little bit differently. Yeah, the girl might come first is also what I'm hearing. Um, seven, eight. So the two of swords. Okay, so the positive about this, I do feel like you and this person with this energy, the seven and the eight, you guys feel like you can take on the world together. Um, you guys feel very safe and connected in y'all's relationship in y'all's marriage um there could be a lot coming out of a lot of different passion a lot of different ideas opinions from the outside world from you too but you guys feel like you can withstand um i feel like as long you know look at how the look at how kind of like they're back to back 
do you know when people do that like you're back to back that, i i hope that you understand what i'm saying because that's what i get you feel like you guys are back to back and you're just like fighting <laughs> whatever's coming your way but as long as you know that that person has your back you're good um and that is so lovely i want to say that both of you really appreciate that you've invested in the friendship of this connection you actually are happy that it took a lot of time because you both realized that there was enough freedom for you to get to know yourself individually so again uranus plays a huge part in your connection because you guys are such free spirited individuals a lot of aquarius energy you have to be doing your own things and in this really silent kind of way you allowed one another to explore the world and get to know each other just to find out to be like hey it was you the whole time thank you for giving me that space and let me see what's out in the world but it was you the whole time and that's why i get like that kind of past life energy has come in before um where you're just kind of reaping the benefits of this time and, and you probably weren't even together in your past lifetime or the lifetime before that it's been a minute since y'all have hooked up because y'all just had so much to explore individually uh but now i feel you guys are satisfied individually with yourself and where you are and that's probably why you're so focused on bringing in some very new vibrant souls into the world um that you can nurture and and both teach you know, life's lessons in the best way that you know how. So I really feel like this energy is going to be mostly dedicated to child rearing. But again, this is a really positive energy for the two of you. Um, the Empress, I do feel like this person, regardless of if you're the Emperor or the Empress, they make you feel like that boss energy. There's so much respect. I feel like both of you guys always manage to communicate with one another with respect no matter where the connection is at the time uh because you're friends you never want to like jeopardize the friendship that you built you feel like it's too it, it's too important for you guys to really truly understand one another i also feel like you guys are also with the two pages and with this being in the positive end i feel like you guys are childish with one another like you guys put on a big front for the world I feel but with when y'all two are together like y'all are very much like kids at the playground <laughs> you guys run around and laugh a lot I imagine that you laugh a lot and you get into these adventures you kind of just do things on a whim I mean you have no issue just going out to get stuff I've yeah it's it's a really it's a really sweet energy and I think it's because you guys are really our friends you guys just do shiz <laughs> like you know you might pack up and just travel you guys just take random trips and I think it's because you don't spend a lot of time together so when it's gold an hour y'all make it golden you see what i'm saying like and that's really sweet you make sure to milk every moment that you have together when you get to spend it together because you don't i feel like you're very traditional if you're the mass if you're the mother you're home you're working you're doing what you got to do you're holding down the fort you might be working and doing this and then your masculine is out hunting traveling doing what he's got to do bringing in the bacon but from a distance so i do feel like there is distance but you guys actually both appreciate that with one another with the eight of wands um but you're in constant communication. You guys might not be seeing each other, but you're in constant communication. I feel like people get annoyed with how much y'all like talk to each other. Um, you guys do not go over like I'm hearing like you guys won't let like two hours go past without checking in on each other. You know, something really important has to be happening if you're not talking to this person is really what I'm getting. So that's the positives. So now let's look into the challenges of this connection. So what are the challenges of this connection? Oops. Oh, the universe, the world, distance at times, the six of wands. Oh, wow. Attention from the world. Like I said, Uranus, the seven of wands. Huh. So that's funny. It's the same thing that's positive, you know? It's you and this person against the world. I feel like both you and this person might be in the spotlight. Um, You might be famous. They might be famous. You both might be famous. I just feel like somebody, at least one person in this connection gets a lot of attention. I feel like it's probably both of you, to be honest. Um, But at the same time, there's a defensiveness and like you guys have to protect one, one another protect y'all's relationship from the world um hence why you guys feel like you're back to back and fighting everybody and that's good and bad but because it's good that you have that partner but at the same time it's exhausting hence why you probably are always having to travel and be on the move to just relocate and, and do different things the queen of swords Ooh. 
Ooh, okay. I, I, all those came out, but I, they're <laughs> the Ten of Swords and let's see, uh, the Ten of Pentacles. Ooh. I, yeah, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. So I feel like the, one of the challenges in this connection is the feminine might have to take a hit. And what do I mean by that? They might have to take a hit within the connection for the sake of somebody's career. I feel like the feminine has to sacrifice um, for somebody's career for a period of time, for a period of time. I'm just getting with this Ten of Pentacles. There's something about having to, to, to stay home. Um, and maybe or, or protect home or defend the home let's keep going into it these were the other cards that came out so we got death rebirth the sun <laughs> the four one you know what you just got more cards than everybody else pile three you just got more cards that's okay um and then you got the Eight of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, and the Lover's card. So, all right. The Four of Wands, again, in, in traditional tarot, tarot, it is a homecoming card. And it also can represent twin flame journeys. Like I said, the sun and the moon. We have the sun represented here. Um, there's some very deep transformations, the death card, Pluto energy, that have to come out of this connection. I do feel like at some point, I'm getting the feminine in particular in this connection, um their status changes like midway through and that's something that's just like wait what um maybe the the masculine is more used to is used to receiving a whole bunch of attention but at some point I feel like something changes very much with the feminine and it kind of now she can't do the whole traditional thing um and so that'll be a challenge in this connection. The un the universe, the seven of wands, the death card, and the four of wands. So I feel like that'll be a major challenge. I do. But I do think that it's going to be something that you can overcome because both of you want to fight in this connection. It will almost be like midway through, <laughs> you know, you and your husband or you and your masculine, you're rocking. Um, you and your feminine are rocking. And then about... That you have a kid, you have two kids, they're taking care of the kids, they're doing a wonderful job. You're like, wow, I can't believe it. I got the best mother of my kids in the world. They are just so freaking dope. And then all of a sudden, the feminine gets a call from like, I don't know, Tyler Perry to star in his latest film. And the film's a hit. And you're like, wait, I, I wasn't expecting you to not be home. Like, I support you in your ideas. Or if it's music, it's like then their mixtape that they've been working on. Like, they were doing cool. Like, they were fine, you know. But then they end up getting Grammys. And now everybody's, like, blowing up their phone. And you're just like, well, I support you. I love you. I'm happy that you're being successful. But I was not expecting this onslaught. Like, you've reached a different stratosphere than when we were working together. And I feel like your masculine holds a lot of power up top like he's really dominant with the sun card just like the sun is and then the moon sneaks in there and they're like oh wow the moon has its own power so i do feel like there will be some major changes specifically with the feminine um in this connection at some point in time that will cause it to have to change and shift um there will be like a I, it's not power dynamic necessarily because i think that that's what the masculine will have to learn regardless of where this feminine is in life she still is pretty traditional the masculine just has to realize she's traditional but now with like you know, a million billion subscribers and like friends with Drake and friends with Chris Brown or, or what have you, you know, just throwing stuff out there. Um, and it could be, and if it's not on a grand scale, like when I say grand superstardom in that way, it could be like, you just decide to go to law school, um, or you decide to really pursue your, you get this once in a lifetime opp opportunity to get your doctorate. <laughs> and now you're like this professor and it's like, like, wait, I was so used to doing it this way. And you were like, yeah, I did the whole mom thing because that's what, we agreed to do, but now the kids are older, so I'm ready to get back into the field. <laughs> I'm ready to work. I'm I'm tired of being alone. I didn't just be born to be your wife. Like, I've loved it. It's been fun, but, like, now it's time for me to kind of get back to myself. So I feel like that this is something, this transformation from the feminine is something that you're really going to have to fight for um, in the connection just because you're masculine, like doesn't necessarily understand it like he's like what more could you want like do I not feed you enough like are you not happy are you not clothed like what's like what more could you want and you're like just just a life for me like just a life <laughs> I have talents I have dreams I want to still study I you know I'm not putting my foot in the grave um love you but like I have other stuff to do so I really get that energy <laughs> 
Um, but here, just through working and learning how to communicate that, because uh, I feel like at some point the masculine will feel like, where do I fit in this? But you are twin flames. You got both twin flame cards, the universe. Like, I don't feel like this is going anywhere. This is just one of the major challenges you will have in your connection. Um, because there will be a shift. And even here, look at this. We have the two, the boy and the girl. <laughs> The, the little boy and the little girl. Oh my gosh, we have an eagle and then we have a lion. So that fire and air, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> that's so funny. So I do feel like there this this love is protected and guided with the Cupid energy there too. And the lovers didn't come out for any of the other readers, readings now that I'm thinking about it. So I just feel like it will work out. There will be a lot of victory, but there will certainly be a major like ending to the relationship as you knew it. You know what? I feel like that will that will be that will follow this connection. It's just like it's going good. It, it, no, not it's going good. It's just like we were friends. Then all of a sudden, our friendship ended, and then we were lovers. Then we were lovers, kind of this lovers energy, and then that ended, and then we got married like so quickly. Now we've been married. We've been doing the traditional thing, mother father thing. Now that's ended. Now the feminine is on her thing. Like it's constantly there's constant shifts, unexpected cycles, unexpected differences that that take place throughout the course of this relationship hence why temperance is at the bottom of the deck um it's a very blessed relationship a very abundant relationship a lot of luck is is granted through this connection um it's guided but it requires a lot of patience and even here we have the yin and yang energy so you guys are meant to 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 work together but that'll be the major challenge is um just kind of the feminine, really, in my opinion, still wanting to work and and having like other people that she's obligated to. Like, it's not like, you know, like she genuinely, I don't know. I mean, I guess it is. It's just like she genuinely is very successful. It's like Shakira, you know what I'm saying? Like if Shakira's husband, she's like, I'm Shakira. Like, I have to keep dancing. Like, I have to do the Super Bowl. Like, I love you. <laughs> I would love to be snuggled up with you. But like the Super Bowl, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really get that energy. I really, really do. Um, So now let's move into the sexy part. Mm -mm -mm -mm, the 18 plus part. So let's see, what will the sex life be for a pile number? Okay, we got the two of wands. What does sex life be in the marriage of pile number three? The six of pentacles. <laughs> I just heard breathing. Like, I just heard like a grunt. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so I feel like this person really likes to... With the six of pentacles here, this person like likes to pop up on you. Like they love it when you're not paying attention to them. And they just come up with you and just like take you. And you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Like, they're very, like, I'm getting very stalker prey. Like, they really like to pounce on you. They love it when you don't expect them to be, like, staring at you, looking at you. And then all of a sudden, they're just like, bam! You know what I'm saying? And that's the masculine or the feminine. I feel like the sex is, like, really unexpected. But they always have an eye on you. Trust me. They always have an eye on you. Oh, my gosh. The emperor. Whoo! Can somebody say big D energy? All right. Literally, he's holding a cool. You know, so I just heard a uh, mystical. I came in with my dick in my hand. <laughs> and I feel like that's the energy that your masculine carries, especially with that sun. He might carry a lot of Leo energy at points in time. Um, he might have Leo Scorpio. I'm hearing specifically. So this person is just used to being in command. Hence why I think that shift when you are in command too, like they're like, wait, what? Because um, they're very controlling. This person does exercise a lot of power in the bedroom for sure. Um. I do say this, you guys have lovely conversations. I feel like after you've had sex, you guys are really open to channeling. So there is something about you guys are able to really talk and have kind of mind sex is what I'm hearing by dead prez. Um, you're having like mind sex, like you really like to investigate one another's mind and see where you're thinking. This person is very giving at points with the six of pentacles being here, but they like being in charge. Um, they really like to please you even here he's on top but beautiful ace of cups energy at the bottom of the deck so there is a super loving compassionate energy with this person um at times but at other times they just come and they just literally take you <laughs> like they're very primitive but i feel like you like that like they're just very primitive and impulsive you know when it comes to you is kind of what i'm hearing uh, with that emperor Got the two of pinnacles. 
So we got the Two of Wands, Two of Pentacles, the Knight of Cups. Yeah, aw. <laughs> the Nine of Swords and the Nine of... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We got the Eight of Wands. So again, you travel a lot. There's going to be a lot of eyes on you at certain parts in this connection. And so... I really do feel like this person keeps a close eye on you. They are nervous that other people are watching you. This person is very possessive of you. Like they want, they have to know that they're in control. That this person does struggle, especially that Leo Scorpio mix. Oh my gosh. If they have that Leo Scorpio mix, as strong as they are and as like, mm, you know, in their faces they are, they are very insecure um, about you in particular. It's just like, oh man, what's that? There's a lot of I'm stronger than all my men except for you. Like, I just feel like this person feels like I'm stronger than all my women. I've never had a woman who could, I really feel, rip my heart out and stomp on it except for you. So he's very insecure about, like, the masculine and the feminine. I feel like it works both ways, to be honest. Like, you're just like, dang. But I feel like the masculine is more of the jealous type. Like, if you look, see how she's just, like, putting on her hand, putting on her apron and he's, like, in the back. I feel like he flunked through and they're like, what are you doing? Like, who are you talking to? And you're like, I'm just, like, getting dressed. And he's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Like, I thought I heard another voice. <laughs> you're like, uh, the television, like, calm down. Um, but since this is popping up in the sex part and I'm getting this two of pinnacles, this person gets really turned on. At the same time, they like to prove themselves <laughs> to you over and over and over again like i feel like this person like when you're out uh because there's a lot of attention surrounding this connection you spend a lot of time in the public eye or with other people and so they notice people looking at you they notice you talking to people and then you'll talk to them they'll let you talk to them they'll be watching you the whole time from the back watching you with i mean just uh poof. And then as soon as you guys get, I mean, whether you get home, they might even take you to the bathroom. I feel like this person is comfortable having sex with other people that are around. They don't mind being in public at all. Let me tell you that. They don't mind. Um, so <laughs> they will pull you aside and be like, oh, are you done with your conversation? And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they'll pull you in the bathroom and be like, oh, you were really talking to them, huh? You got some stuff to say. And then you know there you go boom so i imagine that this person i i think that like at times of course like you'll be like you need to calm down but i do imagine that it's a sense of foreplay um i do feel like there's a loyalty from you though um that they love and adore but you'll be bored as heck if you haven't seen this person in a long time. And I feel like you only have room for this person because this person's probably pretty sizable. So you don't really give into as much temptation as they think you do. You have a whole bunch of people who come in with this combination right here. You have a lot of people admirers and, and giving you attention, but they're not this person. And I feel and I feel like that's where you run into issues. You're like, yeah, they're great. They like me, but they're not you. I want you. But at the same time, since this person is gone and since you have distance, you get really bored. So this person almost always feels like they came in. I feel like this person is, they surprise you all the time. <laughs> they do not tell you, like they really live on an impulse. So if you haven't heard heard from this person or talked to this person in a long time uh, or not in a long time like I said you'll talk for every hour like on the hour but if you haven't seen them all of a sudden you hear a knock on the door and they're like I'm home or you heard the keys jiggling you're like why did you tell me I was literally on the phone with you and they're like I want to surprise you and then you guys instantly hit the ground running I feel like this person rarely do they come back empty-handed if they haven't seen you in a while they're definitely a gift giving person with the knight of cups um so they really love to like just treat you because they feel like they haven't seen you in a long time so they come in and they're like here's a cup here here i'm offering this to you i know it's been a minute um i want to give you everything this person is very romantic they like to set the mood they like music um i'm here with the knight of cups they really like music and they like being out <laughs> so some of your uh, enough of your sexual escapades are going to happen in public what is that Kanye words like, what do we may love at this vogue party we let's shut down the whole party what everybody's not like what everybody's not like they want that uh, you motherfuckers living like half of your level half of your life okay sorry that's such a great line <laughs> uh but i feel like that's the energy that this person carries like they're like i'm gonna live life to the fullest like if i want you now i'm gonna have you now i don't care who's around some of these parties you even threw yourself i just feel like there's constant i want i do want to say that there is um it's pretty, it's consistent. Like th there's a lot of passion all the time. It's really distance that separates you. 
But yeah, at the, the other thing is like this person definitely, they use sex to explain themselves. They use sex to communicate their insecurities. But every time they're giving it to you, they're making sure that every time that they're done, you don't want anybody else. I'm shuffling again. We got the Ten of Cups. <laughs> and they just feel like you are forbidden fruit. They hate. Every time they leave, they hate having to leave you. They hate having to get up. They hate having to leave your energy. They hate it. Um, and so they just dream about seeing you again, you know. And that's why they pop up on you and all this other time. And it might be even for like a weekend. Let's say that you were traveling. You're on tour, right? They'll come in, pop up on you on a weekend, just spend the night, and then leave out. But they're like, I just really needed you, you know. Um... Oh, we got the star card, this healing energy. You really heal them. Um, and they love that about you. And the Ten of Wands, so they're very possessive. Oh my gosh, look at that, that passion. So this person, like, you know, they you, they just come and take you. Like, they love it. They'll rip your clothes off. Like, I feel like this person will destroy some of your outfits. You'll be so mad. You'll be like, that was expensive. They're like, I will get you another one. I do not care. And they will. They really will get you another one or pay for it to be fixed. Um, but yeah, they will definitely. Their person is kind of, they're aggressive. They can be on the more aggressive side. But at the same time, they're very loving and romantic. So you, you, Uranus, this relationship happens all over the place. There's so many different layers and facets to this person. But overall, it's super healing and they really love you and they really want to protect you and they love it no matter how far they are, you know. No matter how far they are, they're constantly thinking of you. And hope that you're thinking about them too and not talking to anybody else. That really haunts them. <laughs> Golly, that really haunts them. Like if they if 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 they're not looking at you, then they're paranoid. Um, so strong Scorpio energy. And like I said, Leo, highly sensitive. All right, so now let's look at your advice. Now let's look at the overall advice for this connection, pile three. Um, we had some fly out, and it's the seven of swords and the four of pentacles. Is that the nine? That's the nine of swords and the four of pentacles. So it it just flew out as soon as I touched the deck, so I'm not taking it. But um, what could that mean? Um, be be aware of finances. Excuse me, or be aware of the possessiveness. You know, you have to be aware of that possessiveness because it was the four of pentacles, right? Your finances and just like, I'm getting strong Taurus energy or second house energy from this person too. Um, or eighth house energy. I'm going to have Venus in the eighth, Venus in the eighth, um, or I said Venus in the eighth, excuse me, but you, you see what I'm saying. Um, Venus in the second, any of that Scorpio Taurus access. All right. Advice. Oh my gosh, this did not take that long. Maybe Spirit was like, I told you what it was. But yeah, I feel like their Spirit was just saying with those two combinations, you have to really be mindful um, not to let this connect, not to let the possessiveness and particularly the masculine sphere to stop you from, you know, doing what you want. The Nine of Pentacles, no, the Eight of Pentacles. And then one last card of advice, please. So Spirit is really saying, you know, you got to pursue the Seven of Wands. <laughs> that followed you. You guys must have some Mars energies in the five and the Four of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so it came out. <laughs> it did come out. So th it this is a complex connection just because there's so many powers at play like it really is you against this, this world i feel like spirit is saying remember that this person isn't the enemy you know they're not really trying to be the enemy but they can have a very specific and fixed way of looking at how relationships should go in general but both of you are untraditional type people you're like well you're not a traditional husband like you're not even home half the time how can you expect me to be a traditional wife when you're not even a traditional husband like you gotta understand what i'm saying so you will have to hold your own and hold your power in this connection regardless of what gender you fall into you if you're a masculine you're dealing with an extremely strong feminine and if you have some things that you want her to do if you're like i really would like you to stay home or like not work while you're pregnant please don't work while you're pregnant like i need you i need you to respect me on that so both of you will have to really kind of understand where the other one is coming from and from the divine masculine divine feminine energy um this connection is worth working for and it's worth fighting through. I feel like at some points in times, even though you're friends, some of you, some of your connections are so strong. Um, 
and your personalities are so strong that at times you'll be like, this is not worth it. Like, it's not worth it. This person is really, really, oh my gosh. Like, I just feel like you're really going to have issues where you don't see eye to eye. When y'all are flared up, y'all are super flared up, you know? Um, Spirit is saying in the back of your mind and deep in your heart, I feel like you know that this person is worth fighting for. You know that sometimes when that, especially when their jealousy and possessiveness flares up, you know that that's coming from childhood traumas, past life traumas. Like they're really working through stuff. It's not an excuse by any means, you know what I'm saying? But you can, you have empathy from where they're, about where they're coming from. I do feel like connect spirit is saying this this connection is worth working with and like i said for what it's worth you probably have worked with this person or it takes a long time with that start stop you will go through so many different dramatic cycles and changes with that pluto transformation this connection will take so many different twists and turns but the underlying passion that's there in this ace of wands you know particularly that sex it's never going to change and so i do think that you'll always be geared to fight for this connection and be comfortable in it but at the same time not let it stifle you um as you want to explore your own avenues and learning how to communicate and also again your backs are together you have each, you have each other's backs even though sometimes you're facing different directions and really understanding that with this connection uh will make it will make you realize that it is grounded it's so funny so we got these two pinnacle energies surrounded by two fires so it's stable you know what i'm saying like the saturn energy is there you guys are both in it together you guys both want <laughs> that's what i'm hearing you guys both want to be together forever you're both committed to that it's just at times you guys can project what you want that to look like and that is going to cause those issues and those frictions and you got to hold your own they're certainly going to hold their own but then there will be a time that you have to learn to work to compromise um i do feel like you guys might have businesses or something together so you have to talk to one another like i said even if you guys are beefing and fighting you still will be talking to each other pretty constantly <laughs> Like, because it could be work at first. It's like, I know we're not talking right now because, like, you pissed me off, but did you sign off on that? Because I got to send it in at 12. Like, you know, I really feel like that connection will end up happening. So it's worth working for. It will be a challenge, particularly when that shift comes for the feminine, because I don't know why, but I feel like the kids might come pretty early because it came soon. So, like, when you're married, you might have like a year or a year and a half, and then you're pregnant. Um, and so then it just becomes about the kids and feminine still doing her thing and rocking and rolling, being a mom, being a wife, all that good stuff. And then it just changes for her. She really pops off. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, but you can overcome it. It really, this connection is worth fighting for. That is your advice. Okay. So pile three, that is what I got for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that this reading found you well. I hope that you found it to be informative. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe and subscribe follow me on tiktok follow me on instagram and if you'd like to book a personal reading with me you can do that in the description box below or shoot me an email from the description box below um and if you like these 18 plus readings then i would ask that if you can and if you are able to then please consider donating to the channel i cannot monetize these videos because you know they're a little frisky they're not child friendly um um so if you can a dollar five dollars or even a prayer i so appreciate every piece of donation to the channel um thank you if you donated already this is cash app so we got the dollar sign capital a capital b lowercase ev224 and if paypal is more up your speed then that link is in the description box below but please don't forget to share this like it i really appreciate you guys and thank you so much peace until next time